Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Pattaya movie channel, Stella. A small town girl is a ghost story enthusiast. She is quiet and well behaved ordinarily. Her mother left when she was little, so Stella and her dad depended on each other. On the Halloween night of 1968, Stella originally planned to continue with writing at home, but she couldn't resist the pestering of her friends, Chuck and Augie. So in the end, she agreed to join their pranks. The target of their prank was a senior bully named Tommy. Tommy always bullied them and other children. Even the scarecrows in the fields meant to frighten birds he didn't spare. Chuck was fishing poo from his own toilet. He was going to make a fecal bomb to attack Tommy. By the time evening arose, Stella dressed up as a witch. Chuck dressed up as a comical Spider-Man, and Augie dressed up as a clown. Carrying the carefully crafted fecal bomb, they set off. They waited by the roadside for a long time. Finally, Tommy's car arrived. Tommy and his gang snatched their bag expecting candy but found out it was doodle he backed the car up to give them a lesson only to be attacked again a fireball was thrown into the car tommy scrambled to put out the fire and crashed into the railings on the side seeing the trouble they caused stella and her friends fled quickly running through the bushes to a drive-in theater here they met a boy who would experience a life and death journey with them later together with the name ramon they hid in ramon's car seeing that they hid in the car not coming out frustrated Tommy sneered at Stella. You wouldn't run away like your mother, would you? And then left in resentment, Stella was stung by Tommy's words. Rumors had it in the small town that it was because of Stella that her mother had left the longing for her mother, and the wound of gossips deeply hurt Stella. Getting out of the car and calming herself down, Stella suggested to take a tour of the haunted house. During Halloween, the group of friends cheerfully headed there together. Ramon easily picked the lock with the tip of a pen. Stella, who loved ghost stories, was very familiar with the legends about here. She explained to everyone that this used to be the residence of the Bellows family, who were one of the earliest inhabitants in town. They built a paper mill by the end of the 19th century. Legend had it that they had a daughter named Sarah, who looked very strange and frightening, so the family never allowed her to leave the house. Later on, many curious children in town would sneak in to see what would the weirdo Sarah look like. Although they couldn't see Sarah at the time, Sarah would tell them stories through the wall. The children who heard the scary stories died one after another. Everyone said it was Sarah who killed them. However, before the police came to investigate, Sarah hanged herself. Stella and Ramon found the basement where Sarah was locked up and found Sarah's book of the horror stories. It was said that the stories in this book would eventually come true. As everyone debated whether to take the book away, the door was shut suddenly. It turned out Tommy and his friends arrived and wanted to lock them up in the house. Chuck's sister, who came to plead for leniency, was pushed into the basement by Tommy. A spider crawled onto Chuck's sister, which made her scream Stella on the side, who was obsessed with ghost stories, flipped through Sarah's storybook, mumbling Sarah bellows, please tell me a ghost story. At that moment, the door that Tommy had locked from outside suddenly opened. The group thought that it was Tommy who released them. Stella took the storybook she couldn't put down, by the way. Back at home, Stella began to read the storybook with great interest. She noticed the red writing in the book was still wet, as if it had just been written. What was even stranger was that the name of the main character was the same as Tommy, the school bully who had just chased after them, drunk. Tommy got home and was scolded by his mother. She ordered Tommy to deliver eggs to a friend. Tommy had no choice but to comply. Stella read in the storybook that Tommy took the eggs and left home for the last time, passing by the scarecrow that he hated. Over here, Tommy, just as described in the storybook, encountered a dead-end-like scenario in the cornfield. No matter where he headed, he always ended up back in front of the scarecrow he hated. The scarecrow suddenly came to life. Descending from the pole and began chasing after Tommy. Catching up with Tommy, the scarecrow stabbed him with a sword. Then grass began to grow from Tommy's mouth and ears. Finally, he turned into the appearance of a scarecrow. The next day, Stella found that Tommy didn't come to school. The police soon came to investigate Ramon, saying Tommy had disappeared without any news or a trace of his body. Stella and Ramon found out that the scarecrow that Tommy hated was now wearing Tommy's baseball uniform. This convinced Stella even more that every story in that storybook would come true. Feeling a bit frightened, Stella returned the book. When she came home, she turned around to find Ramon was holding the book in his hands. It turned out that it found its way back to Stella's bookshelf on its own. Stella opened the book and found it was writing stories on its own. 
she tore a page off and it would write on a new one. This time, the protagonist was Augie. The story said that Augie found a large toe from the stew he was eating. Stella and Ramon called Augie in a hurry, telling him not to eat anything. Augie thought his friends were playing a prank on him. He said his dad used to tell this story when he was little, that a corpse was looking for its big toe. As he spoke, he ate the stew his mother had made. As a result, he really found a big toe. Then he heard a spooky voice saying, Who took away my big toe? As if it came from the hell. Then a pair of big dark hands dragged Augie away. When Stella and Ramon arrived, they only saw the scratches left on the floor. Their initial curiosity turned into fear utterly. Stella worried that their haunted house adventure had aroused some sort of evil force and the horror stories would happen to each of them. They decided to burn the storybook. But they found that no matter how hard they tried to burn it, the book remained intact. The inquisitive Stella decided that since they couldn't give it away or destroy it, why not find out who Sarah Bellows was really like and why she did such things? They began to search for information separately and discovered even more terrifying and bizarre facts. Sarah hanged herself in 1898. A year later, her entire family mysteriously disappeared. They didn't even get the chance to deal with their paper mill and the names of the entire Bellows family were in the storybook, which meant that the Bellows family also disappeared in the horror stories. As they were flipping through the storybook, they discovered it started writing a new story. This time, the protagonist was Chuck's sister, Ruthie. The story's title was Red Spots. The spots on Ruthie's face rapidly grew larger, as if there were worms wriggling inside. Then a hole broke up in the middle. A hair stuck out from inside. When Ruthie was about to pull it out, a swarm of tiny spiders rushed out, crawling all over Ruthie's body. Already afraid of spiders, Ruthie was scared to death and screamed loudly. Stella and the gang rushed over, poured water on Ruthie and chased away the spiders. But Ruthie was so terrified that she ended up in the hospital. Stella and her companions continued their research and found out that Lou Lou, the daughter of the Bellows family's servant, was still alive. They went to visit her. Lou Lou had aged considerably. She warned Stella, you are next in line for the nursery rhyme foretold when the hearse passes by, do not laugh, for you may be the next one to lie in it. As for the storybook, Lulu claimed she gave it to Sarah because she felt bad that Sarah had to sit in the dark all day long. Stella inquired, was Sarah indeed like what the rumors said that she knew magic? Lulu replied, how can magic exist in this world? Only anger does. Do you know what you have done? You have provoked her. As a result, she continues to write her tales. However, remember, child stories can wound, but they can also heal. That was a profound statement. Only at the end of the film did they understand its meaning. Lulu's daughter also informed them that Sarah committed suicide in the hospital, not at home. They decided to go to the hospital to inspect the medical records of that time. The gang played some tricks, and a nurse informed them that the files were located in a place called the Red Room. Chuck said he had a recurring nightmare that he was trapped in a red chamber. A plump and pale woman whispered incessantly in a low voice, this is a wicked place, run before it's too late. Afraid of becoming a character in Sarah's stories, he dared not enter. Stella and Ramon decided to search the archives together. Chuck stayed on guard at the entrance unexpectedly. Chuck was chased into another area. According to the record, Sarah got albinism. Her attending physician was none other than her own brother, electroshock therapy, isolation treatment, lateral diathermy therapy. Her brother tortured her with various methods. They also found an old wax cylinder used for recording. In the recording, Sarah cried out, I did not harm the children, I wanted to save them. But you would not let me. The children died because of the water due to the mercury in it. Then came a cacophony and Sarah's screams. Obviously, Sarah was being brutally beaten. Suddenly, a menacing voice came through the speaker. Very well. Let me tell you what you want to hear. Chuck's dreams of a red room and the pale-faced woman, Stella and Ramon, immediately realized that was Sarah telling a new story. Something bad was going to happen to Chuck. Sure enough. On the other side, Chuck found himself trapped in a red room. A plume of black smoke drifted over the roof. The pale lady walked towards Chuck step by step and then took Chuck in her arms. Within moments, Chuck was sucked into the woman's belly. By the time Stella and Ramon arrived, they only found Chuck's pen. The cops weren't convinced the storybook that told ghost stories. The cops suspected they were withholding the truth. The police took them into custody. After being locked up, Ramon revealed his most terrifying secret. Two months ago, his brother was shipped home from the Vietnam War, broken into pieces almost soon after he received his draft notice that he chose to run away. 
If the storybook were to write about him, it would surely mention this. Sure enough, a zombie ripped into many pieces appeared. Each piece would automatically assemble together, forming a complete zombie. And he desperately attempted to crawl into the cell while yelling at Ramon, You coward! Stella and Ramon broke free and escaped. Ramon drove a police car to lure the zombie away. Stella rushed to the haunted house. She needed to find Sarah to beg her to stop everything. Ramon, with a zombie atop the car, crashed into a bus. Trapping the zombie tightly, he got off the car and fled. Stella arrived at the haunted house and cried out to Sarah, Sarah, stop telling stories right now. We never hurt you at all. We just want to help you. We know you are innocent. You didn't poison the children. Please, please stop telling these stories. Suddenly, the pitch black room lit up. Stella traveled to another time and space. Mistaken for Sarah by her family, Stella was chased after relentlessly. Finally, Sarah's brother and father caught Stella throwing her into a dark, damp basement. From their conversations, she learned that they were furious about Sarah spreading the truth about the water. Meanwhile, in another time and space, Ramon was chased into the haunted house by the zombie. In the darkness, a weeping Stella saw a ghostly figure approaching her, saying as it walked Stella, I have one more story. I only want to share it with you. Determined to stop Sarah about the truth, Stella said, No, this time it's your turn to listen to my story. You are a victim. What your family have done was blamed onto you through rumors. Now you've taken several of my friends. This is all you're doing. Now you've become a demon. The demon in people's mouths. Stella continued in tears. I will tell people the truth about you, but you must stop what you're doing now. You must put an end to your rage. The demonic-looking Sarah stared blankly at Stella, then bowed her head down in shame. She handed a pen to Stella and said, Write my story with your blood. Stella pricked her finger and wrote, Sarah Bellows is innocent. She knew the truth and tried to stop the accident. She was brave. She was deeply hurt and destroyed. Stella raised her head and told Sarah she would finish her story and that she could now rest in peace. At that moment, Sarah let out a long, piercing roar and then disappeared. The zombie chasing after Ramon suddenly dissolved and vanished. The story that Sarah had been writing stopped, but as for Sarah's story as promised by Stella would continue the tale of a lonely girl who turned into a demon by her family. At this moment, she finally understood the meaning of how stories can hurt and also heal. Plot recap. The Bellows family was among the earliest settlers in town. They had a large business, including a paper mill. Sarah, their daughter, was unfortunate to have albinism, but she had a kind heart. The family's paper mill discharged large amounts of mercury, severely polluting the environment, causing immense harm, even death to children, to prevent Sarah from revealing the truth. They locked her up in the basement all day long. Later on, Sarah's brother, a doctor, abused Sarah in various ways until her death. The family framed Sarah up by the deaths of children caused by water pollution, fabricating stories of Sarah killing the children. The tales spread far and wide. Sarah died with everlasting grievance, turned into a demon in rage and grievance. She wrote stories about her family in that book. Family members mysteriously disappeared one after another. Then the arrival of Stella and her friends and the act of taking the book infuriated Sarah once again. She started writing ghost stories again, targeting people's fears. She wrote terrifying tales according to people's specific fears. Stella's friends disappeared one by one in the ghost stories until Stella discovered the truth, promising to prove Sarah's innocence. Only then did Sarah stop writing horror stories. Sarah was hurt by her family's slanders and rumors. Stella testified for Sarah. The story she wanted to tell healed Sarah. This was the so-called stories can hurt and also heal. The film repeatedly mentioned the disappearance of Stella's mother, with no clear account in the end probably setting up for a sequel back to reality. How many people have been maligned by rumors and ended up like Sarah becoming what the rumors say about, especially in this age of the internet, low cost of spreading rumors, rapid dissemination, and our playful speculations might become the starting point of hurting others. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like and share if you enjoyed it. Thank you for your support. See you in the next episode.